Hello and welcome to a, uh, another design tutorial. This one's specifically about design and, and getting through uh, that section uh, and of the design cycle if you like. So as you know we've got um, a, a, a situation at the moment with face masks and this is an ongoing thing and it's not going to stop uh, pretty uh, very soon. We're, people have used face masks for a long time now and they're wanting more and we can see people coming up with all sorts of novel uh, ideas for face masks we know that everybody actually needs face masks and so here's a, a situation where there might be a commercial opportunity because uh, there's a niche market for them here, there's a shortage and so people will start rushing to get their products to market and when they do that they might also make mistakes at the, in the commercial production uh, cycle. So I just want to go through some of the things that you might need to consider while you're designing and uh, let's hope that we can uh, learn something together. Uh, Alright, so things that we really need to consider when we are making a face mask uh, would be the how do they shape the face mask to or mould the face mask to the face directly because that tricky puzzles, that tricky puzzles, two sides that are glued together with a, with a rib that comes down the front, there's a polylastic there's a polylastic material that's used like a neoprene, then there's a moulded type of of face mask that just sits on. Um, it's made out of some sort of malleable material and here here we want to really focus and, and be aware of the fact that materials really impact on our designs and we need to be thinking what material will I use and then how will the properties of that material actually impact on how my design can be made. So if I'm going to mold something I need to make sure I've got that that uh, you know mechanical property of, of malleability um, that can be used. So as you go into you know senior design, uh, you'll have to be more aware of that and, and what's happening. The other type of design I think we see around a lot is just a normal rectangular tissue-like material, which can be uh, folded over uh, so that it can expand as needed. So. Um, I've just got a couple of pictures here for you. This is a fairly well a moulded one and it's actually got these two examples have vents in them uh, which I'd like to, us to explore a little bit more. There's many different options uh, with masks and I've just found these on Alibaba but the three I really was sort of interested in pursuing a little bit today are the normal rectangular mask and you can see here the little sort of heat pressed. You need to think about how things are constructed as well. So there's folds down this rectangular thing so they're just sort of folded over and then they're they're crimped there, they're, they're sort of heat pressed and glued together and so then as it expands it can then shape around your face. So that's how you can do it with a rectangular piece and, and that's relatively easy. We, we could do that, a lot of that sort of stuff uh, with the tools and materials that we have. The other types of masks are these ones that I, I said are from either side, they just uh, go straight around and at the front they have a rib uh, that comes down and then the one that I'm really interested in pursuing a little bit more um, uh, this week is that I'd like to try and cut out some, a neoprene type of face mask here and maybe not have the middle bit but look to get one of these one-way valves in so we'll talk about that a little bit. As I mentioned it's really important that we think about the materials that are involved, uh, what, jo uh, what joints, how we're going to glue it, will we weld it, is can it be welded, all these types of can fit and fit and then prototypes are really important because they help us to decide to decide how we can uh, get out, you know, how we can actually get out design test. Um, Alright, so if we look a little bit more, um, we see we start we start to look at getting some patterns. We see here's a, just a normal sewn up material one with some elastic around the end and a seam down the back. So that, that would be relatively easy to make. The thing I'm also interested in is can I find um, some of this material and can I buy the uh, the filtered lay layers because I'm uh, maybe if I could sew up simple designs and I could put this between then I could make a, a design that I could I could use more and more. So uh, first thing I did was to grab um, this design here and um, trace out one and sort of have a go and I just cut it out of cardboard and, and, and had a look what it was like. Halfway through that I decided that look there was a bit of a mistake that thing's not going to fit over my ear so I made the ear hole bigger and then I cut the second one and around the top here I put a second line and I folded little bits in and I also put little cuts down there 
in order to uh, stick that together. So I made myself a very quick little prototype um, there. I put masking tape around the front. You can see I've used a wheat bix uh, container. And you can see on this side uh, already, I've tested it on my customer and I can see that it's not going to work there. So there's a clearer picture of the bigger hole on the other side, which I've adjusted. Then you can see I've gone back now. And, oh, all of a sudden I can actually fit it over the ear. And so now I can start to think about measurements. And if you pull the side back, it actually fit not too bad. And for a first start, that, that wasn't too bad. Um, in this one, it's been pulled back a little bit more than this one but we can start to see straight away the sizes that we need to to make and we can start bring options we can then think about all right, what type of clips or holes or adjustable or velcro, velcro things are we going to put around the side etc so of these three sort of designs that um, I've started looking at um, what I what I need to do now is to try and think all right well what what problems might I have for each of these designs and I'm going to explore each one of those because they're the sort of designs that I want uh, to explore further so can I purchase neoprene that's thin enough and can it fold and uh, or can I do can I use neoprene on this type of thing and fold it down like I've zoomed in there for you or is neoprene only good for this type of mask neoprene I think would be quite good for this type of mask we just need to figure out how it will be joined at the front and so we need to do research into that as we're designing so you can't do your design cycle in all little parts you have to be doing the design and then go back and jump back into your investigation and fix up some stuff there and do some more relevant investigation then come back and then we start to see some really developed designs can I buy valves I'm really interested in can I buy these one-way valves to stick in here and, and how would I glue them together oh, I've got an idea that maybe we could put two layers of neoprene together and we might be able to buy some thin uh, filtering material to stick between them and then we might be able to put a one-way valve in because I'm one of the things that I don't like about masks and I think a lot of people don't like is that you keep on breathing in your own carbon dioxide and it'd be really nice to have a valve to let that out there so we want to be able to figure out these questions ask these questions and um, I, I'm going to try and cut this thing on the laser cutter and see how it fits without this little insert in the front there because it would be really cool to be able to make these at school we know there's a shortage and it would be good to uh, explore that a little bit more so I raced off while I was doing it and I started looking at one-way valves now obviously one-way valves the first thing that's going to come up is valves that might do pressure and air etc then I found these one-way thin uh, valves for food safety etc and then I started uh, finding one-way valves for breath breath valves for face masks. Now I imagine that these might be very difficult to source at the moment but you see they have a little rim around the edge there which provides if we had we could glue that on okay or we could put a second layer through and we can glue it in between the layers which would, would be quite satisfactory and they seem quite cheap uh, 1000 uh, you know maybe we could start up a bit of a production line here and give some masks away to people. The one that I think is starting to now get to right on to where we need is this exhalation valve. So this is, you know, to let the air out, but it's not letting air in. And so these, are, we've done some research now, we can find out sizes, etc., and we can, we can work on that. So in order to pursue these designs more, I need to draw some designs, I need to explore how the joints work on them, and uh, figure that out in, 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 in some way, uh, so that I can um, start to understand what what's necessary in my design so that I'm not coming to the end of my design process and then suddenly finding out oh I can't make this well we need to make those decisions along the way and we can do that by doing uh, testing out little prototypes by putting it on by making making little prototypes and then seeing oh it's not going to fit on our fit on our so after I've found out all that information and I've done some drawings I've gone and ahead and I've designed millimeter thing in front there so that I can that will be where I would glue this one um, I'm out nicely ready to cut on the laser cutter um, here's my neoprene version which I'm stretching which I'm stretchy material will will go around the ears and we'll see how that fits and in here some up in here some might be able to put one of those one-way valves or we could cut this we could cut a section in the middle middle out where we have a double layer and we put our our filter in there
So um, there's a, I hope that's just a little bit of an overview on how you can uh, make your designs practical and more feasible by doing some research as you go and by exploring and fitting and, and working on your design so that you can see. Now I've got many mistakes in these two. I'm sure the sizes will be wrong um, and I'll have to adjust these drawings but that's okay because um, it's that's what we do when we design. We find mistakes and then we fix them and away we go. So I hope you've learned something and um, I hope uh, you're doing well with your design process. Okay, keep working hard.